You're listening to the Arts Report on YouTube. At the end of the Fringe Festival last fall, there is an award ceremony. Marissa Smith walked away with not one, but two of those awards. In fact, uh, two rubber chickens, which is the trophy that they give out. She won the Cultivating the Fringe Award for her play Wicked Shorts. That means the Cults will host another run of that play, uh, their season opener, no less, coming up this fall. Marissa also picked up the Joanna Morata Award for Mentorship. Uh, but amidst all that... She's also remounting a play called Tape at the Waldorf. Uh, that was out in 2009. It got rave reviews at that year's Fringe. Uh, it was completely sold out and held over. The, the Georgia Strait called it fantastically authentic. The Courier called it the, one of the best shows of the year. And uh, more and more and more and more. So obviously a lot to talk about with uh, Marissa, and uh, we started with uh, a little bit about uh, Wicked Shorts. Well, originally it was a site-specific show at Wicked mm -hmm. Cafe, mm -hmm. and we commissioned our, or we put out a call for submissions for uh, short plays, uh, two-handers, to be done, and we chose four of them, mm -hmm. and that was what made up Wicked Shorts at the Wicked Cafe uh, for the Fringe, and it was a site-specific BYOV thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, coming up at the Cult, we're uh, going to restage the show in their studio, so we're going to uh, transform their culture lab into a culture cafe. No way! Yeah, yeah. Sort of recreate that BYOV feel. Yeah, yeah. It's oh. it, it should be really interesting because I'm going to add a lot of lighting mm. um, to kind of uh, create atmosphere mm -hmm. in that space, and uh, and we're going to more bring than in... you could in a in a cafe, maybe. Right? Yeah, 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 totally. And there's a bit more room, so mm -hmm. uh, the actors can kind of enter and exit from in and around the audience and there'll be tables and chairs so you'll feel like you're in this sort of cafe cabaret yeah. type setting so we'll be serving uh cocktails i hope so <laughs> definitely they're, we're trying they're trying to get licensing for inside the right? space um but if not you can always bring your drink from from the hmm. bar i meant that as a lobby. joke but no no seriously serious. yeah you can have a drink while you're watching the show that's phenomenal yeah okay and so that that'll be coming up um <laughs> Uh, later, but for now, you are busy, busy, busy uh, gearing up for another show, and this is Tape, which is another uh, remount. Yes. Tell us about this one. Um, this is happening at the Waldorf Hotel, mm -hmm. and uh, we originally uh, staged it uh, in 2009 at the Fringe, mm -hmm. and we sold out our run and held over and sold out the holdover, and uh, it was just a fantastic experience. It's a wonderful script by Stephen Belber. And what do you think uh, resonated really with audiences? Like, this was done in a hotel room at mm -hmm. the Waldorf and will be again, although in a different room yeah. this time, a little, a little, a few changes here and there. Um, yeah, what do you think it was about this show that really uh, captured audiences' uh, um, attention? Well, probably the site-specific nature of it. Like you, it's an 18-person audience. Hmm. Um, you all go into this hotel room, and for one hour, it all happens in real time. There's no blackouts or transitions. Mm. It's just everything's happening right in front of you. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're just part of it. And there's these three characters that are uh, kind of battling back and forth about an issue that happened in the past. You mm -hmm. don't really know who's wrong and who's right and what the real reality of the situation is. Hmm. Um, but there's some pretty funny moments, um, some some business in the in the bathroom and then out the window and all sorts of fun stuff that you can have in, in site-specific theater. So I think that's one of the main attractions. Great. And uh, we didn't talk about it, but the other award that you won, the Joanna Murata Award, um, is all about mentorship. And uh, have you been able to sort of apply um, some of those skills, I mean, it's, it's ongoing, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're obviously mm -hmm. still, still learning, but um, have you noticed um, sort of uh, um, that uh, this version of tape has benefited from that? I think so. I mean, I, I'll be performing and producing in this one. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, a lot of my mentorship so far has been for directing and oh, okay. producing. But, um, but it's, it's still, yeah, I mean, you can always learn. I mean, I'm always learning from, from everybody that I, that I encounter so mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the learning that's happened this year has been uh, focused on directing mm -hmm. which is uh, pretty exciting because I'm sort of an emerging director myself um, and I just recently got to assistant direct with Ron Jenkins um, in the the cult uh, um, premiere of 1984 mm -hmm, the adaptation yeah yeah and it was uh, such a fantastic experience and I think mm. I'm gonna be able to apply some of that stuff that I learned there to uh, wicked shorts uh, with you know when it comes to tech lighting and transitions because yeah. uh, Ron Jenkins just is just a magician when it comes to uh, incorporating design elements and mm. 
Uh, and that's inspiring, isn't it? Just the scale, uh, the the ambition of of uh, using all these these technological, you know, all these ideas, all these possibilities, and incorporating them into theatre, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, now you mentioned blackouts there. That the show is very sort of immediate. Yes, uh, it's very. <laughs> you know, you're there in the hotel room, eighteen mm -hmm. <laughs> with eighteen friends or strangers. Yeah, and um, I just wonder where do you think that style of theater that approach is is better than others where you do use blackouts like i'm thinking of the blackout issue mm. in particular because a friend of mine some actors mm. they, they they hate them They're like yeah. i hate blackouts it ruins everything well sometimes it can stop the uh stop stop the, the so arc the momentum. Of the story the momentum okay and also i think um actually ron said this to me during rehearsals is that blackouts can be very powerful if you wait for the right moment for them, if there's a really good reason other than, you know, just trying to get to the next scene. Mm. Um, because, uh, yeah, you can, you can use them for, uh, you know, for tension building or, or, you know, if, if there's sound happening in that blackout mm. that's, that's telling, parting, telling a story. So sometimes right. they're good, but when they're misused or just used for no particular reason, it's sort of, yeah, it gets, for me, it gets tiresome. Hmm. But uh, yeah, that's one of the fun things about this show is that you just, the action never stops. Right. <laughs> you're always in it. And you're just, you know, you're taking on this little one hour journey of, of uh, excitement. And as an actor, isn't, isn't it tougher <laughs> when the audience <laughs> is like right there and you can see them, you know, see yeah. their eyeballs? It's really, <laughs> yeah, it gets a bit nerve wracking, but it's exciting for us too. You know, because we, it really keeps us on our toes. Doesn't it? Yeah. We cannot. There's no, 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 no. There's no line. escape. Yeah, there's no escape. <laughs> they can tell exactly what you're thinking. Yeah. You know, uh, even when you're in between the lines, you, there's there's no room for uh, for BS, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to be really kind of honest and, yeah. and real, right? There's no, yeah. no room for BS, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. thanks very much. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. And that's Marissa Smith talking about. Uh, Talking about tape and the immediacy of the performance, which I love, I love, I love, I love uh, seeing and being in shows where the audience is right there in, in front of you. I, I think it uh, it does it does bring an excellent uh, uh, feeling of immediacy and um, and it forces you to be a better actor. It makes you work harder, I think, and and makes you give makes you forces you to give a better performance. So you can be one of those lucky 18 uh, people sitting there, um, right there in that hotel room at the Waldorf. For uh, the tickets are fifteen dollars for that. It's cash only at the door. And that's happening from April 20th until the 24th. Uh, two shows, uh, 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Three shows on the weekend, uh, matinees at 3 p.m. And Marissa really wanted me to stress that it is so important to get tickets early because there are only 18 seats, only 18, so they will go fast. And you can reserve tickets in advance by calling 604-671-9776. Don't miss the Arts Report on CITR Radio in Vancouver, 101.9 FM. That's Wednesdays at 5 p.m. We're also streaming online at citr.ca every Wednesday at 5. And uh, don't miss our podcast, which you can find, yep, at citr.ca.